Hey everyone, Lance here. I wanted to make a really quick video as after the latest macOS High Sierra update that launched last week, 10.13.4, I stumbled across an article on the Apple support website relating to using an external graphics card on a Mac. So it's now no longer just a developer thing, there is some consumer level support for it as well. So I wanted to run through that article and go over some of the things that Apple was saying is supported and also some of the configurations that they're saying are supported. So let's get into that. I have also noticed that that update is very stable when you're using an external graphics card and there are some really nice features implemented. So the article starts out stating what Apple says an external graphics card would benefit you for and they state that professional applications, 3D gaming, VR content creation and more. So obviously those first three things are the main things that people will be trying to use an external graphics processor on their Mac for and Apple has also said that only Thunderbolt 3 equipped Macs are supported. So that being MacBook Pros that released from 2016 onwards, iMacs that released from 2017 and onwards, and of course the iMac Pro. This first lot of features I'm going to skip over relatively quickly as they are kind of a given if you're using an external graphics card with your Mac. Metal, OpenCL and OpenGL applications will be accelerated by this and you'll be able to connect additional monitors beyond Apple's supported configuration on your Mac if you're connecting them to the card within the enclosure. You'll also be able to connect VR headsets to the graphics card within your eGPU enclosure and with that beautiful Thunderbolt 3 technology you'll be able to charge your Mac and connect your external graphics card with one single cable which is very handy if you want to use it like a docking station when you get home. Now some of the other cool features are that you can use your Mac in closed clamshell mode and it will only have your display that's connected to the external graphics card as the display. Now that is an awesome feature as people that have been playing around with external graphics cards for a long time will know that that hasn't always worked and previously you'd close the lid of the Mac and the display would still be outputting. Now it also says you can connect an external graphics card while a user is logged in. Now that is huge because previously when you connected an external graphics card or connected the enclosure I should say, it would ask you to log your user out and log back in to enable that GPU. Now I've tried it and it works flawlessly for me which I think is awesome. There is also now a menu bar icon in the top right of your screen where you can click and eject your external graphics card which would be the safest way to disconnect it obviously. Now another thing that is awesome is that you can view GPU history or activity levels I should say via activity monitor on the Mac and you can do that by going to activity monitor then the window menu and then choosing GPU history. One last interesting feature that I've got listed here is that you can connect more than one eGPU using multiple Thunderbolt 3 ports on the Mac. There is a note here saying not to daisy chain these for best performance Obviously there's going to be some throughput issues and some bottlenecking but I'm trying to think of what possible use case you would use that in. All I can really think is if you're wanting to run a large number of displays or maybe multiple VR headsets for testing, um, I'm not really too sure. I don't believe this would work in a gaming situation as currently as it stands applications need to be on the display that the graphics card is connected to to get the benefits of the external graphics card. Apple has provided some supported eGPU configurations here with the main note being that the enclosure you use needs to be able to provide enough power to charge the Mac as well as provide power to the graphics card within the enclosure. 
They only have AMD configurations listed here, which is interesting to note. However, the iMac Pro does have Vega graphics. My 2017 MacBook Pro has Radeon graphics. So I'm guessing there's some kind of partnership going on there at this stage. One configuration here is for the RX 570, 580 and Radeon Pro WX7100 graphics cards. They recommend the Sapphire Pulse series and the AMD WX series for those cards. Now the chassis they recommend, Thunderbolt 3 chassis that they recommend are the Otherworld Computing Mercury Helios FX, the Power Color Devil Box, the Sapphire Gearbox, and the three Sonet EGFX breakaway boxes, the 350 watt, the 550 watt, and the 650 watt. Something interesting to note is that my configuration works flawlessly and it doesn't fit into any of that. I've got a Gigabyte RX 580 card in there and I've got the Mantis Venus eGPU enclosure. Not listed there, but it works flawlessly for me, so I don't think there'd be a terrible amount of problems if you were to run something slightly different from what they're recommending. The other configuration is the AMD Radeon RX Vega 56 and they recommend the Sapphire card for that too. Now there's kind of a trend here, I'm seeing Sapphire through the whole lot and when the first keynote was announced, with, or first keynote came out where they announced the support, the supported card was a Sapphire RX 580 so maybe there's another partnership there. Anyway, the Vega 56 supported graphics cards are the Sapphire Vega 56 and the XFS Vega 56. And the chassis they recommend are the Otherworld Computing Mercury Helios FX, the Power Color Devil Box, and the Sonet EGFX Breakaway Box 550 and 650. I'm guessing due to a higher power requirement than the RX series cards or the RX 570 and 580 cards. And the last configuration Apple supports is the AMD Radeon RX Vega 64, Vega Frontier Edition Air, and the Radeon Pro WX 9100. The cards they support are the Sapphire and XFX Vega 64, the AMD Frontier Edition Air Cooled, and the AMD Radeon Pro WX 9100. And there's one single supported chassis for this, and that's the Sonet EGFX Breakaway Box 650 Watt. There is also one Thunderbolt 3 all-in-one eGPU product that they support, and that's the Sonet Radeon RX 570 eGFX Breakaway Puck. Obviously, there's going to be dozens of configurations that work outside of what Apple recommends, and they'll work just as Apple expects. But if you are new to this or you're wary about things not working and you just want something that you know will work 100%, maybe one of those configurations is for you. Lastly, Apple has also said applications that will be supported by this will obviously benefit things that require a more powerful GPU to perform better. Obviously, that's the whole point of this, right? So not all applications will support it. And you'll also want to keep in mind that the application itself needs to have support for eGPU acceleration on the inbuilt display on the Mac. If it doesn't have that, then you will only see the benefits of the external graphics card on a display connected to that external graphics card. So a good example of that is if I was running Valley Benchmark to test, which I often do, it won't have any performance increase if it's on the internal display of the Mac just over my shoulder here. However, if I move the window onto this display here, the frames per second will jump pretty quickly as it will now be utilizing that external graphics card. Apple has also said in this article it won't be supported in bootcamp. And believe me, I've tried, it is still a mission. But I do want to try and get it working, and I do want to make a video for you guys on that, so you can keep an eye out for that in the future. Um, what else have they said, said, said here? 
So obviously VR applications are the same as what I previously said about the Valley example before. VR applications have to be run with the headset connected to the graphics card in the eGPU enclosure. Obviously these Macs don't have HDMI ports but you can get adapters and those headsets I don't believe will work at all in that configuration. Correct me if I'm wrong though. Lastly Apple has said here for the best results from an eGPU it's best to set the display that's connected to the external graphics card as the main display and obviously you can do that from system preferences, displays and then select the arrangement tab. From here just drag that little white bar onto the main display so I have that on this one behind me here. And that's about it guys, that's a pretty big update from Apple on the eGPU front. It's finally out of sort of the developer space and into more of the consumer grade space. Obviously people will be wondering if there's any performance increase. Sadly there's not, I've rerun my benchmarks and there's zero performance increase over the previous version and previous developer versions. If you do want to see my benchmark results, I definitely recommend checking out one of my previous videos, which I'll put a link in the description below. But that's about all I wanted to cover. I apologize that it's basically just me sitting here talking to you, reading off my phone, but some really good stuff in there and I'm pretty excited by this update from Apple and you guys should be too if you're interested in eGPUs. But hey, I do thank you guys all a lot for watching. Check me out on Instagram and Twitter down below to see what I get up to uh, away from the YouTube side of things. And hey, I'll see you in the next one. I almost forgot, don't forget to subscribe.